Creative View Studios. I'm Carla. I'm the designer of more than 50 cool patterns that use both beautiful sides of fabric. Today we're outside with the beautiful sunshine and all of the birds and I'm going to introduce you today to Phoebe. Phoebe's a girl that started it all with using both beautiful sides of fabric and learning how to use and determine what fabrics are reversible. Phoebe began, I was going to make a bee quilt and I wanted a very eclectic background, which I think I achieved. Uh, however, I was going to make Phoebe with a lot of different fabrics, but I liken this fabric to our setter, female setter dogs. We had an English setter female called Maggie Mae and we now have a Gordon Setter uh, female called Bonnie Lass. And uh, both of those dogs knew if you didn't have both hands on them petting them. They knew uh, if you were off petting another dog beside you. And so this fabric, when I had other ones around it, was shouting to me, pet me, pet me, kick me. Then I realized this really doesn't need any help. It's a vibrant, beautiful fabric. And I believe it was one of their Hoffman challenges back in the day. I knew I would make Phoebe and the binding out of this fabric, but I wanted a third element just for the design factor of having a third element. I thought a bee scab or a honeybee pot, like a honey pot or uh, flowers or a um, even just placement of hexes uh, to make like a honeycomb. But every time I tried a different fabric, or even this fabric with the right side of it, it would detract from Phoebe. So I was frustrated and I tossed my fabric to the ground as I stood up and it flipped over. And that's when I first started to think, wait a minute, I can do something with this. It still catches my eye. It still has a relation. In this case, I like that it's almost like Phoebe is getting her life and vibrancy from the flowers that she's pollinating. Uh, so it just worked. But that began my journey on uh, studying value and the nuances of value and how to determine exactly what value was of a certain fabric. I understood lights, mediums, and darks but I didn't understand how a fabric value changes based on the fabrics around it. And so this is a really fun way to sharpen your value skills without looking at color wheels and reading and you're, you're, you're just having fun playing with fabric and using your camera, removing the color to make it black and white and that's how you look at the value. Because colors can be deceiving but value tells the truth. Uh, you can just test your fabrics that way, it's so fun. And you test not only your focus fabric values, so obviously the flowers up here are the reverse, but you also test these with your background fabrics. This quilt is a little bit different than my others because it was my first one, and I've repeated two fabrics in it which I don't normally do, but you can. There's really no rules. Um, however, uh, I also didn't really use the accent strips in the traditional way that I do now. So these are the accent strips here, this one coming down, this little one going across, with, which ends up finished at a half inch. So you can really use a, a pop of something there and this one that brings your eye across. The idea of these accent strips is that they will bring you through the quilt, but also they lead you to the focus of your quilt. Now in this one, I didn't necessarily use fabrics that stand out, except this one here. Normally I do, but really it's up to the, the feel you want. If you have a very soft focus fabric, maybe you're doing one of the bouquets, and you have soft flowers. You're not going to want an accent strip that takes over. Now in this case, Phoebe doesn't really need any help. So let me show you what some of these background fabrics are. So this, is, it's a batik with bright petal strokes out of browns and greens and golds. 
on a modeled batik background. This is the same as this piece here. This one is the B positive, one of the fabrics from the Deb Strain line years ago. And it says, be kind, be respectful, uh, behave and behive. Lots of different words there. And I was able to position them so some of them show through the actual B. So that is this section of the bottom half. You add this accent strip right here. It's a blue and white modeled. This section over here starts with a square. This was a batik with swirls that almost look like snails in um, like a dark beige and a light beige. This piece is what makes this quilt invaluable for me. It was my late mother-in-law's uh, fabric from her stash. And so I, I just wanted it in this quilt that I made and um, I treasure it. And I treasure it even more for that piece. Right here, this accent strip was actually the selvage edge of this fabric. And that completes your first, your bottom half. This goes together really fast. You could have this quilt background piece in 40 minutes. Here we have a rectangle that is another batik. It's a darker beige with lighter beige um, flowers. This is a large square, 18 inch square. And it's like a postage stamp with scriptive writing, with cursive writing. And it's on a whiter background whiter background and this one is like I described below is another rectangle now these two this square and this rectangle get pieced together pressed cut apart and you insert this accent strip which matches this fabric down here now usually uh, I have these accent strips all different but Phoebe's a little different and that's okay so when you're quilting these uh, I generally, for my fusible applique, I will do something either straight lines or very geometrical or in some way to contrast with my background quilting. So in this case, I have horizontal lines. They are not perfect. They are not evenly spaced. They are not even all necessarily really horizontal. <laughs> um, there's bobbles, but bobbles are human and I, I'm okay with being human. Um, I think it's, it's, there's a time and a place for perfection, but these are, these are fun past quilts and it's okay to play and have fun doing it. Uh, I do think that there is something attractive about knowing that a hand did this and not a machine, although I did use my machine, <laughs> but you know what I mean. And then my backgrounds are very swirly curvy it's a free hand I developed when I was doing quilting for other people and you know out of necessity you just have to do it and it's just sort of what I what, what happens it's just what comes out of my um, body when I'm trying to or my brain or whatever and so these are very curvy swirls feathers loops and swirls just Something that is very different, you'll probably see this one, very different from to contrast with the straight lines of the bee. And in the flowers, even though most of this is one piece, uh, because the flowers are so interconnected, I still quilted around each flower, just kind of scribble quilting. And if there was a larger one, I'd meander into the center and do the center, come back out, um, so that each one is individually popping out off of the background. So how I secure the edges is while I'm quilting, I will go along the edge of the applique and then I'll also go along the outer outside of the edge of the applique so that it makes it pop off of the background of the fab of the of the quilt. And same way up here, I would go on the edge of the flower and then off the edge to let them pop off of the quilt. So basically that's Phoebe and the patterns available in my Etsy shop. You can learn more at creativestudios.com. All of the links will be in the description below. Uh, be sure to subscribe, click like, and tap the bell. Thanks. Bye. I think there's a mockingbird mocking me.
time to wrap it up. The hawks are moving in. Thank you.